So I'm talking today about the interview with Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. There are accusations of racism, um, feelings of suicide, looking back to um, past events in the royal family. And I'm going to talk about that today with their charts and take a look at who might be a racist. Was it a misunderstanding? What's going on here? So check it out. Okay, so um, you see I have the, the headlines here. Um, this is just from the moment on Google. Queen Elizabeth releases a statement on Prince Harry, Meghan Markle interview. Half of the articles are about this goofy print, uh, Piers Morgan who quit the British TV show after he walked out. <laughs> High drama is happening over this. It's not funny. There's a real fracture in the family, whether we like to, you know, whatever we think about royals, you know, royalty or whatever, there are, there is a, you know, two brothers involved, your father, grandparents, um, and whatnot. And we're going to look at their charts. Really good case study in royalty and certain signatures that you see with, um, you know, charts of like royals and whatnot. And uh, so it's very interesting and we're going to talk about that. Um, I also want to let people know, just because uh, I am getting, um, you know, a lot of um, inquiries about this year, that you can get a 2021 tune-up for your chart um, and get and find out how these different shifts will affect you this year. We have all these shifts that are coming up. Just ahead, we have an exalted Venus. We have. Jupiter changing signs. We have all kinds of stuff coming up. And if you want me to talk about how these things might affect you, you, know, you can go to that link there and get a 30 minute recording. Um, I, you know, give me a couple weeks to do them, but I um, will talk about the, the important shifts for you. Um, so you can check that out. But again, we have this if you don't know Meghan Markle, who is now the Duchess of Sussex, that's her name. I had to bring this up because I also wanted to remember. I can't remember who, what these people's titles are. But she came out and described why there was this break between her and Prince Harry from the royal family that happened last year. You know, for most of us, it all looked very credible, of course. You know, I mean, and it wasn't just her allegations of feelings of being, uh, you know, feelings of being suicidal. There were allegations of like racism where, um, you know, uh, it was, it was interpreted by her. I'm going to try to keep it neutral. And again, I'm not, I'm not at all saying that it's not true. Okay. But I also, you know, racism are, it's very strong charges, but to her, at least it was pretty obvious that, People were maybe concerned about her race. Now, the British press definitely made a lot of allegations um, about her race and whatnot. That was very difficult, and she was quite depressed about those things. And she talked about how she was somewhat silenced, not allowed to by the British family. I'm sorry, by the royal family to even get counseling or help because of how it might look. And everything was about appearances. You know, once you become a royal, then you, you know, you give up your rights as a sovereign being, so to speak, to get counseling, get help, um, drive, like you have to give up your keys, I don't know, all kinds of stuff. I didn't watch the interview, by the way, all of this. So correct me if I'm wrong. I have no interest in what's sitting for two hours through that interview, but just what I've heard was discussed and I've read the synopses. So about just how depressing it was, and it, the bottom line is there was all these charges of racism because she's mixed race, not necessarily within the royal family, but she also the real bombshell that came out as a result was that even as her son, as Archie, her son was being, you know, he was, as she was pregnant with him, at least one of the royals asked about, you know, what the, what the, what color the baby was going to be, what she thought. She certainly interpreted that as a, as a, you know, as a kind of racist um, um, statement, which again, I have no reason to doubt that, but it's also, these things can be 
misinterpreted where it could have been a question, an inquiry about, hey, what do you think? You're mixed race. The babies usually come out darker. Again, it'd be a terrible subject to broach without tact. And I tend to think that it probably, if there was a question asked like that, you could convey that question like that in a way that made it absolutely 100% perfectly clear to the person that it wasn't because you were worried about it or there was, there was a racist quality to it, but you were just maybe curious. At any rate, this this is the my opinions aside because I, I'm just trying to be tactful here because it's an explosive um, uh, issue and I don't care who it is, you know, we got to be careful. Allegations of things aren't necessarily fact, but we also have no reason to doubt that the person's position is valid. That's how she felt for sure. And so we're just going to look and see, you know, we'll look at the charts of the Royals here and take a look at, um, at what, uh, at, at, at these, at these people's charts. And again, it's, you know, it's a sad thing to look at because you have brothers, especially for me, you know, brothers and fathers, it's now being speculated because she also didn't name who made the explosive charge or the, the, what she, what she felt, what, well, actually not just her, Harry said the same thing. So I should be, I should be clear. They both said that that was, that there was a, um, that, that, that those rate, that the racist, what they perceived to be, and let's just be honest, what was most likely, if not a hundred percent, certainly a kind of racist angle toward the child and whatnot was, was, stated because Harry said the same thing. And in fact, it may have even been said to Harry and Megan picked up on it. Please correct me if I'm wrong. As you say, I should have maybe researched that part of it more. Perhaps it was said to Harry and Harry told Megan, correct me. You can put it in the comments because I didn't watch it and I don't, I'm not up on that much of the, all um, of the specifics of it, but I do know that that was the allegation um, because of Megan's race. Anyway, as a, as a couple, they're united. They, they were like, well, we got to get out of here. And Harry seemingly is very noble about this, even though he's a royal and his, is kind of going against his family, his brother, his father. He also made it clear that it didn't come from the queen or her husband, that it, that it was that, that, the, uh, that the discomfort with race and Archie's um, race came from someone other than the queen and... Prince, whatever his name is, is it Philip? I don't know. Um, so again, they they as a team really decided that okay, we 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 want to get out of this. We don't want to do this anymore. Plus, Harry is like sixth in line for the king anyway. He's never going to be the king. Um, it'll be his brother at some point. And again, in case you don't know the succession, it would be his brother and then his brother's kids. It might even be Kate Middleton would be before Harry. So Harry's never going to be the king anyway, unless six dominoes fall before him, which is probably not likely. So anyway, let's look at the charts here. I have Charles up here first, but let's look at Meghan Markle first. Um, this is, uh, this is, um, I'm looking at a few comments here just to see. Thank you. Shanti Leon said it was said to Harry and he related to her. Yeah, that's what I thought. Now it's coming back to me, but, um, me, I, you know, I, I look at the charts. <laughs> I'm actually look, wanting to look at the charts. The, this has always been the way I approach these events. I think it's fascinating. And then I want to look at the charts if I have good birth times. And by the way, you know, I, I just, I haven't really gone over it. I'm kind of discovering it as you're seeing it. But I obviously do know the, um, uh, how, you know, I do know the story. And, you know, I looked at it today. And, and the other thing I see is that, you know, Piers Morgan quitting and all this in British TV and British culture. This is a huge thing. And so, yeah, that's what I thought. So it was said to Harry. And the thing that really showed up to me, in fact, I'm going to look at Harry and Charles first. First of all, Charles, uh, not Charles, um, William, William and Harry, these are brothers. So you can really see their connection. This is Prince William, which is Harry's brother. He's got a Sagittarius ascendant K2 in the first he was born on an eclipse. This eclipse is a signature of royals, royalty. I've done case studies on this before. You see both Prince William and Prince Charles were both born on eclipses or right near eclipses. 
Prince William on an eclipse, very close to an eclipse. I mean, like it was happening when he was born. So Prince William very much going to be a royal or going to be the king at some point. And again, you look at his dasha, Saturn moon. Look at his dasha right now. It just started in January of this year, Saturn moon. And look at his moon. His moon is an eighth house ruler, which shows a break. But the moon is also the ruler of Mars and Saturn in the 10th house because they're in hosta and could definitely show, especially in Saturn moon, in um, Saturn moon dasha, the moon is the ruler of Mars. Again, the fifth house Lord. I don't want to make this too, too complicated as a, as a case study with dashas, but you can see his kind of royal nature, particularly in, in, in this moon. It really shows a break with Prince William. And a, and a painful, difficult cycle. While all this stuff was going on last year, Jupiter was in his first house, and also Ketu was going through his ascendant while all this stuff was going on last year. I'll run a, uh, let me do a, yeah, okay, so it's going to hit the transits. So here's the transit chart up here, and if I go backwards, you'll see Ketu, so this was like even last May, and last June, July, August. So K2 was going through his first house here. Even it, this was like in, in August, K2 was right on his ascendant. Somebody put in there, somebody put in the comments um, exactly when Harry and Meghan left. It was sometime last year. I don't remember when. It, last year, 2020 was a blur anyway. Everything was, it seemed like it was um, March for like nine months. But it was sometime like in April, May or June, I think, or something was when they left. But while that was going on, K2 was going over Prince William's ascendant and Rahu was going over all these planets in his seventh house. So you could see that with William last year, all the, this big break was going on where K2 was going through his first house and Prince Harry as well. Because again, look at Harry. Harry's got Sagittarius ascendant and Jupiter in the ascendant. So last year when K2 was going through his, going through Harry's ascendant, and Prince William's ascendant as well. As you see, Harry and William both have this Sagittarius ascendant. K2 was going through and separating them, not necessarily from each other, but bringing a lot of intensity and scrutiny, right? And you also see with, with Prince William, he was also having a K2 return, and Prince Harry was having a Jupiter, or I'm sorry, K2 was going over his Jupiter. So you could see how that transit last year of K2 through both of their first houses and um, Prince Harry's Jupiter as well and Prince William's K2 was separating on an individual level, but it also you could see like severed a connection between the two. This right away makes me think that this, and my instinct initially right away when I heard about this was that this was a blow up between the brothers more than anything else. Um, and um, that that I have a feeling just because of the way relationships work and that there's going to be a, if the, that I think Harry was looking for an alliance with someone, an alliance with his brother or with his father, regardless of which one said what. I think there is an alliance between Prince William and Prince Charles and an alliance, and, and Harry being the outsider. Which one of them made the racist comment or whatever is almost not irrelevant because regardless, there is a united, those two are united, Charles and Harry. I'm sorry, Charles and William. But And, and so I think the biggest pain and the biggest break would be between Harry and William, not between Harry and Charles. That brother connection between those two is so strong. And um, this, as you can see in the charts, again, I'm doing astrology. I'm not, I could easily say, you know, I'm not talking about it because of what I've read in the news. I, I don't, I don't know anything about these people really. <laughs> I mean, I do, but I, I have not looked at hardly anything, but um, this older brother syndrome, you can see Prince William and Prince Harry have such a connection. Even, you know, Prince Harry's Saturn 
Prince William has Jupiter there on his Saturn again. Um, and so there's a lot of synastry, a lot of connection between the two. But let's take a look at a few other things here. Harry right now is, is Harry is now having his Rahu return. Rahu going through the sixth house. For William, that's going over his Venus Mercury, his sixth house ruler, and his Mercury um, in the sixth house, which is his seventh and tenth house ruler in the sixth. Now, something else that's very interesting also to of, of note is that both of them, as being Sagittarius people, are both they they have similar rulers. Uh, I'm I'm sorry, the same rulership. So both of them, the third house ruler is Saturn for both of them because they're both Sagittarius. Again, so the third house ruler, which is siblings, is what I'm talking about. Siblings are ruled by Mars, the Karaka, and the third house ruler. Both of them are are running important, um, you know, planets that activate the third house right now, which. Um, Prince Harry, he's in Rahu Venus, Dasha, right? Rahu, Rahu, he's in he's in Rahu Venus, which actually started since this marriage and all of that. Again, you can see he got married since all of that. Venus is the karaka of marriage, but Venus is also the ruler of Saturn, this exalted Saturn in the third house. And someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that back when when all there was maybe some controversy around Harry and Meghan and whatnot, Prince William was very much an advocate for not just their relationship, but you could really see how Prince Harry really leaned on the support and the advocacy and the, and the closeness with his brother. You could just kind of see that kind of big brother's arm around Harry all the time, because Harry, I do know had a dip more difficult life. He reacted much harder you know, he had more struggles with being a, you know, playboy and other kinds of things. And he really found himself when he went into the military. I do know his story a bit because I've, I've done some background on them, but it was really the support and, and love of his big brother that really has been an anchor in his life. And I feel, and, and so they're both running important, indi um, um, they're both running doshas that show Saturn, the third house ruler, as being important now. Again, and it's also Saturn as the third lord, and Saturn brings this potential for a painful separation. Again, Prince Harry, because he's in Rahu Venus, and Venus rules Saturn, and Prince William, because he's in Saturn moon, and we also see that the moon, as I said, is also the ruler of Saturn. So both of them are, I feel this really painful separation between these two brothers. That's the part that feels difficult and hard. It would be nice, and I wouldn't be surprised if maybe Prince William were to make a an actual full-throated human, you know, statement like from a human being, not some press release that would address how sad and tragic it is for him and how absolutely devastated he is or how devastating it is that anything may have been said that was misunderstood or misinterpreted without seeming like, Oh, you're blaming me or, Oh, um, you know, without making it out to be that Meghan Markle just kind of invented the whole thing or whatever. It would be an opportunity. And I actually think that's, quite possible, if not likely. I'll look at it a little further because I actually haven't investigated it. But if there's a real potential here, especially because for William, it's Saturn moon. And the moon is the moon. It's our heart. It's our feelings. And for him to actually step up and, again, put his arm around his, quote, little brother and maybe own up to conversations that were had that – he understands could have been misinterpreted as uh, racist and that perhaps he could have been more sensitive or the family could have been more sensitive or him own up to himself that he remembers a conversation that 
could have been misunderstood, especially in light of what the press had been saying or whatever, and how terribly sorry he is for those things. That would be the creative option that I think is quite possible. Um, short of something like that, there could be, it, it could, it could really get, um, it, there, 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 there could perhaps be a legitimate racist, uh, angle here where there was legitimate, um, worry and, uh, and, um, bias and kind of revulsion around the whole thing. I tend to think that's not the case, quite frankly. And again, part of it is simply because of, you know, you know, William has a, he's got Venus and Taurus. This isn't really, no, this isn't really the chart of someone who I would think is a racist, so to speak, Prince Charles either. Um, this speaks more of anything of a misunderstanding and again, a, a, that part of the interview is what's being focused on more than anything else. And it, it's, it's a, um, you know, I think sort of the stick of dynamite and maybe even in some ways, um, Harry and Megan wanting to tell their story, perhaps not realizing on some level, um, what what the repercussions might be. Diana did a similar interview. In fact, right now, let's do a little, let's do a little research on the fly. Let me pull this up. I'll let you, this is what I'll do because again, I'll bring it up and show you how I would do the research. Let me look right now at, let me bring this up. Okay. Let me look right now at Diana interview when she did an interview a long time ago, when was that? Princess Diana interview with Martin Bashir. I could look, they're even doing the things here. Megan interview echoes concerns. Let me see when that happened. When was that date? Stunning interview in late 1995. Did they ever give dates? See, this is what I wind up having to look at. Let me, let me just move the chart to late 1995 for a second. Let me find the date first. Okay, here it is. Original date, November 20th, 1995. So let me go back and pull up that chart and see. November 20th, 1995. Let's do it. New 11-20-1995. I bet you'll see some kind of parallel here. Well, look at that. Okay, so let's just look at this. Okay, so we got all these planets. Well, first of all, let's look. Oh, sorry, let me pull up the screen. Sorry, at the stream. All right. So here's that. This is the interview, November 20th, 1995. Well, we got all these planets here in Scorpio. And but other than that, Rahu, <clears throat> okay, Rahu Moon, K2, forget this ascendant, but the nodes are here in this axis. All right, so this is, um, it looks like people are having a whole bunch of uh, comments here. Um, here's, it says, Yolanda Faye says, yeah, I feel like it was a misunderstanding. Yeah, I don't really know, but it definitely sounds like one of those things that, that reeks of a misunderstanding that gets blown out of proportion and maybe people polarized a little bit. Um, and knowing and seeing that there's genuine love and affection between the brothers, I think, and, and, uh, hopefully an understanding that this is a catalyst for healing. And also, frankly, the Royal family is kind of back into a position, back into a corner right now. Um, and something, they're going to have to say something, particularly Charles and William and, um, but, you know, I, I thought I would maybe see, I'm trying to find some, oh, I don't have to bring up the chart of now, sorry. No. Okay, so this is the chart of now, and this is the chart of before. 
So the only real thing that I see is this kind of Scorpio connection here, all these planets, and that's the main feature of this chart. And Saturn is in Aquarius. But other than that, this date doesn't really bear as much resemblance as I thought. You do have a lot of planets here. Sun and Venus are here. But it doesn't look as much as, as that chart as I had thought, perhaps. Again, you would look at Diana's chart for that. But I thought we might see something parallel. But so the fact that it doesn't show as much, you know, um, I don't want to read too much significance into it, but I thought I would look. But yeah, when we look at Prince Charles, though, as well, we want to look and see his karmas right now. He's in Jupiter, Venus. Now, again, that started just at the end of 2020. He's got a Cancer Ascendant, and you can see um, in his chart, let me go back. Why do I got him at 2023? All right, so let me go back and look at, at the transits here. Go back. So where we're at right now is if you look at his transits right now, Okay, we're so we're here at about March. Right now we're here. So you can see all these planets. This is Charles' ascendant. And this sat all, all, all these planets in Capricorn are in his seventh house. So again, seventh house is like our family, <clears throat> the people around us. It's not just our partners. <clears throat> He's also got K2 going right over his Mars. That's Charles. Fifth house, which is his children. This is the thing I wanted to bring up with Charles. Is fifth house is our children. So Prince Charles now has K2 going through his fifth house and over his Mars in the fifth. But with Prince Charles, it's his two children. Pressure and stress around his children. Maybe even his children fighting. Because again, Mars is struggle and battle. And so we can see this from Charles's chart as well. And of course, it's his children, obviously. And one of them is his child, like, which, you know, Harry out there um, saying things <clears throat> like this. So there's, there's, it's really quite clear. We haven't looked at Megan yet, and, and I'm going to bring her up here and not to take her last because it's less significant. But again, because it's part of a family dynamic here that it's interesting to look at the families first. Um, so we look at Meghan Markle, what's happening. Hers is very tricky. One thing is, again, there's a birth time that's, at least on Astro Data Bank, that's pretty credible, uh, so to speak. But again, if, if we go back here, even a few minutes, it's 0041 of of cancer. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong, but it doesn't take much. This is a chart that I would rectify if I was, um, if this was someone I was doing a reading for because two, three, five minutes earlier, and it's even four minutes earlier, and it's Gemini. So I would really, personally, I would rectify this chart if it was, if I was doing a reading um, again, also one of the other reasons is because there's the, it it tends to look better to me as Gemini for one reason because of the compatibility with Harry. Because again, if I back it up to Gemini ascendant, first of all, Mars is in the first house, not like she's aggressive, it, it, but you could see or she has a very. Um, I mean, she, it could be explained by by the you know by Cancer as well with Mercury Sun in the first, but. Mars in the first could also work. And again, not because she's aggressive or, you know, a bitch or anything like that. But you but you could see how she had could have that that sort of passionate Mars in the first house, sort of, you know, assertive type. But also, when you look at the compatibility, especially with Harry, you that one seven axis is a lot of um, compatibility, right? It's a lot of compatibility there. Sagittarius, Gemini, strong relationship. So I would really ask about some things if I was doing this person's reading. Um, again, also, she was like an actor and she's done a lot of different things. So Gemini could, could work really well. Again, I don't really know for sure. Especially, though, in light of what we're looking at now, 
cancer also works really well because when, when it's cancer, look at the, all these transits. All these planets are now in her seventh house. Let me just do this. All these planets are now in her seventh house. This chart has both. This is the natal chart and the, and the transits chart. So this is her chart with the Cancer Ascendant, and this is the transits. So you can see that that also makes pretty good sense. Forget the moon here, because <clears throat> that's just for today. The interview happened um, a couple days ago. But again, that also, if you back this up when the interview happened, which would have been on Sunday it aired, I think that was the 6th, right? So Or the 7th, I don't know. I Thank God I have a calendar because I can't keep much else straight. Let me, and so if that were the case, if you back this up a few minutes and that interview airing with the moon going through her first house could have also made some sense, right? So again, just showing you a few variables here. But aside from that possible rectification, you can see why all these transits at the very least are opposite her Rahu Mercury sun in the first of note, we certainly, we have, um, you know, Mercury, Jupiter and Saturn are all opposite Rahu Mercury sun. As I said, particularly Saturn is opposite her sun, her Mercury, regardless of what house it is. Um, and, uh, so again, you can see it at the very least, this can, bring this feeling of being alone and whatnot. When I look at it in that light, um, I would say that the Cancer Ascendant does make more sense because Saturn moved into this, what would be her seventh house last year. And that's when she literally like her and her partner it like left the family. That would be when she started feeling all of this pressure. And so from that point of view, the Cancer does make more sense. Um, I would say. Um, and it makes sense also to have Rahu Mercury in the first. She's an outsider, feels like an outsider. Rahu in the first, outsider. Also born near an eclipse um, in the first house. Um, and also Rahu Mercury there in the first. So this would probably explain her nature better. So again, I just work through the process here. And so you see how I would handle these variables if it was a, if it was a, um, uh, rectification. This is kind of what I would go through. So when we look at our Dasha season, Jupiter, Mercury, and, and um, let's look at that <clears throat> 420. Yeah. So since last year, okay. So again, someone, if someone did do it um, again, I don't, if someone put it in there when they actually came over here, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't feel like looking through the comments, but whenever they, whenever they made the break would have been probably right around Jupiter Mercury since April of last year. So why would Jupiter Mercury do it? So now we would look and see if it's, if it's, if it's, if it's cancer, Jupiter rules the sixth and the ninth houses. And it would be obviously a time when she's gotten married and had kids that really tracks well with Jupiter. It would also track well for Jupiter if it's a Gemini ascending, especially because Jupiter is the seventh house ruler. Right. And also, Mercury would be her identity planet. So again, sort of doing a duel here. But in some ways, Mercury also tracks better for Cancer in this regard, because Mercury would be ruling the Lugna Lord here and also the Saturn Jupiter in the third house, but also Mars in the 12th house and also the 12th house itself. So it definitely can show a break and letting go. Mercury rules all these planets. Again, if it's Gemini, Mercury also rules the fourth house, so it could show the same kind of thing. I'm kind of reading this in two different ways. So if this is over your head a little bit, sorry. But this is me. I'm a professional astrologer, and this is how I think. And if you like that, then you like this. If it's over your head, sorry. But every now and then, I do real astrology to show how I might work. So again, either way, it would actually kind of work for Jupiter and Mercury. But again, I'm kind of favoring Cancer more here because the break is what's more important. And usually, like if this were a Gemini ascendant, right, it would be more like Jupiter, Mercury, and she would be kind of maybe landing in her home more. And it rules all those angles. And there's a lot of Raja Yogas here. Again, when it's Cancer, 
they're first and you know raj yogas give 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 blessings and all and there are blessings she's married and she's got kids and all of that is happening but it's happening with this break um and again that can also be shown because you still get the raj yogas with mercury but they're happening in difficult houses for example so um you know, for example, this moon, Saturn, Jupiter, these are all a bunch of Raja Yogas, but they're in the third house. Saturn is the ninth Lord with Saturn, the seventh Lord. Again, the moon is the first Lord with Saturn, the seventh Lord. Moon is also the first Lord with Jupiter, the ninth Lord. Again, there's still a bunch of Raja Yogas with Jupiter, Mercury, but now the Raja Yogas are happening in the third house, which is a difficult house. So this actually tracks better with what we've seen um, during that time. So I would say this is very much likely 446. This is where it was a early cancer ascendant. And we're seeing that play out. So again, um, this is a very interesting case study. Um, and this, um, <clears throat> I think that there could be some, you know, Let's look here again. He's in Rahu Venus until he starts Rahu Sun in October of this year, and the Sun for Harry is really powerful. Um, it's the ninth Lord in the ninth house. Um, sun is also, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm sorry. Let me take a drink. <clears throat> The sun is also the ruler of the moon in the ninth. I'm sorry, in the fifth. And um, also the ruler of Mercury, his seventh house ruler and tenth house ruler. You know, we might see a, 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 a real, uh, not like he needs a resurgence because it's not like he's being, you know, marginalized, but we might really see him kind of step into a, a new role, a new leadership role. You know, they have that deal with Netflix or whatever it was. I don't remember, but production companies or whatever. And, you know, you might really see his um, emergence um, in a new way um, as a, you know, as a next level kind of leader. Uh, you know, he seems to be very, dedicated to humanitarian work could very well be around even, you know, bringing together people around racial issues and whatnot, which is very much a, a, a cause that he champions much like his mother. I, I, I have looked at general biography of him and he also really talked about in that interview about how his, um, his instinct for talking about racial issues there was an event, again, I don't remember, a gathering where he came out and spoke a lot about racial issues was really frowned upon when it was in the royal family. So, you know, that's really the prevailing theme of what that interview, the impact of it was that there was a whole, there's a whole kind of racial uh, sensitivity and discomfort that he and Megan really were getting away from. The most explosive parts were these comments and insensitivity to Megan being a person of biracial, you know, ethnicity, her psychological needs not not being um, centered in, in, instead of the royal reputation, even blatant statements about, you know, discomfort with a racial baby. That was the most explosive, but Harry also definitely reaffirmed the notion that it wasn't even. It was even. It, it was even frowned upon for him to be a leader in on racial issues, which he obviously wants to wants to be, much like his mother, much like Diana. And so you can see where that context of him just feeling like, "What are we doing here? I want to be free to like live how I want to be." And again, I would frankly say also he knows he's not going to be king, and it's yet like this trappings of just being in a royal family quote with a woman that he loves, his wife, who is biracial, who, you know, and she's not accepted. Now it seems like his kids aren't going to be so accepted either. And like, 
I, I, I he doesn't want to do that. And also seeing that it, it not only is it not endorsed that you know the work he wants to do as an individual isn't endorsed. It's also frowned upon. So you could see why those two said, okay, we just want to leave. I wonder how that interview, if again, if we just look at the prajna or of the, the, the day of the interview, which was, which was the, um, it was the seventh. So it was, just go back step backward here. So on the seventh, this was the day. So this is the, this is the day they did the interview. Forget the ascendant. We just got to wonder how, again, if we look at Meghan Markle's chart, if they're going to feel if again, maybe regret it a little bit at some point, not understanding the impact that it might have eventually, you know, it'll probably pull the Royals into a more, um, you know, pull the Royals into a more modern stance. And again, it's really up to Prince William. This is the other thing that I, um, that I uh, think is, it was incumbent upon William to be the advocate for his brother. And maybe William, you could see in his chart, you know, there is all of this need to uphold tradition and to, maybe just worry or be concerned or not understand how, okay, now, you know, we're the King of England and we're, what are we now going to be the King of England? That is social justice warriors with black, you know, advocating racial issues and maybe just not understanding what that might mean and expressing reservation and discomfort in a very awkward British kind of pull up your butt way. I don't know, but he's not, you know, this is not exactly, you know, this is very conservative nature, you know, Mars, Saturn, and Virgo, and, you know, again, he's got these planets in Gemini, but K2 in the first is Venus, Mercury, and Taurus. It's quite conservative in this regard as well, even though, you know, just not really knowing how to go about it. Um, but it was really up to him to perhaps, as the one who was going to be the future king, to maybe embrace that. So again, I think that as time, as things move forward and especially as, as, as Saturn gets out of, um, you know, as, as, as Jupiter moves forward, go forward here, make little prediction here as Jupiter moves forward. I think we're going to see the movement from Prince William, but, you know, Jupiter is going to aspect these planets in his seventh house, the sun, moon, Rahu. This is Prince William, and this is where we are now. Jupiter is going to aspect, again, these planets up here in Prince William's chart, which are which is his seventh house. Um, it's also going to aspect his natal Jupiter in Libra. Um, that could definitely, you know, be a help. Jupiter is also going to aspect in Prince Charles's chart, his Saturn, and these planets in Prince Charles's fourth house, this K2 Mercury Sun, which is a real place of power. I think you're going to see Charles and William really, um, especially by the time we get into April and beyond, start to extend some real olive branches and think that there will be, the, you know, that some kind of reconciliation will be, will be forthcoming, hopefully, at some point. It's hard to think that that this it's going to stay this way, and um, you know these these um, you know the love of these brothers that they have for each other is real. They had a, had a tough life, and you'd see how much they stuck together, which is not a given. Siblings can be can be very hard. They had a lot of things that they, you know, Harry when he was younger. I do know this um, is uh, is. Um, you know, had a lot of struggles with things that could have embarrassed the throne, but his grandmother, they were all very supportive, tight-knit family, including Charles and all of them. You can see the connection between all of them, that it's it's authentic, you know, and um, it's got to be just very devastating. Certainly some anger there, not just sensitivity. They must be furious on some level. 
I, I, it's expected. And so they'll have to process some of this. But again, the glare of the spotlight is going to make it kind of hard right now for the royal family, for William and Charles to like come out and say, what a selfish, I don't know, or whatever it might be. They're going to have to be restrained and they're going to have to come forth and um, extend some uh, some healing. And again, Megan's story is very similar to Diana's story <clears throat> years ago in a general sense, not the overt racism, but the isolation, the f- desperation, the feeling that you're totally isolated with nowhere to turn, no help, and totally insensitive to those needs. Again, what the monarchy did for hundreds of years is everyone just suffered silently, that British stiff upper lip. I'm not British, so I'm speaking a little out of turn, so go ahead and correct me if you like. But that, you know, Grin and Barrett kind of fortitude, quote, so to speak, that's almost, that's expected of the royals. It was expected of Diana. It was expected of Meghan. Harry said very clearly, I wasn't, I saw this with my mother and I wasn't going to deal with this with my wife. Again, maybe it was naive of Harry to think that it could be any other way, bringing a mixed race lady in or of what it might be to the, British tabloids, that they would be any way other than that. And that's naive and also it's a disgusting mirror that we're holding up to culture. And it's revealing the overt sexism, racism, misogyny that we still have in this world. And it's, again, it's, it's, it's holding a mirror up to all of that. And, you know, British culture has been, they're out trying to outlive their colonial past, much like The U.S. is even more so to some extent. The British history of colonialism is maybe worse than any country in the world in that sense. Um, What they did in India was abominable. I mean, the reason um, the U.K. has so much wealth is because they took it from other countries. This is not an opinion. um, It's factual. And so, again, a British colonial past is every bit as... um, and, you know, shameful as the U.S. and the slavery, this is, again, it's an objective, provable fact, which I'm not even going to disguise at this point. You just need to do a history lesson to know that. And so this is, um, you know, peeling the, peeling the scab off is happening in many ways now in this world. It's getting revealed, the dark underbelly of racism and misogyny and whatnot. Um, in the U.S., our, our, our royalty would be like the presidency and whatnot. That's our royalty, you might say. You know, we've had our bout with these things the last few years. In British, their real royalty is literally the royalty. And, um, and, and the need to transform and to uh, modernize the monarchy, if it's going to survive, is happening. It's up for grabs. When I talked about... I, I, I did a quick update, you know, of, of, of Harry and Meghan last year and saying that they're really a modern, modernized version, not of the monarch, not of the king and queen, but of the monarchy in general. And I do know this is a um, variation on a theme because, again, someone put the name of the monarch because I don't remember his name. But what put, um, you know, the the king before Elizabeth on the throne was the, was the monarch who left and went after the American actress and whatnot. You know, he renounced the throne and that put um, Queen Elizabeth's father um, made him the monarch. And so again, it's not a, it's not an unusual story of people who don't want to be the monarch or maybe ones who um no, they're never going to be the monarch, but now have to live their whole life um, in the shadow of the monarchy. Um, Again, we have this prince also, Prince Charles' brother. Again, I don't even remember their names. They all sound, (laughs) I don't remember, but the one now, is it Philip? Is he, or is that the husband? Well, the one who was Jeffrey Epstein's, you know, buddy on the Lolita Express or whatever it is. I mean, we have these scandals rocking the monarchy now with this kind of depravity as well. Um, 
the monarchy has got a lot to answer for right now when it comes to this, again, privilege and all these other things that are, that are, um, that are going on. And so we see this monarchy under pressure right now. And of course, this is another version of it, probably the most um, approachable uh, part, you know, um, family of, you know, part of the monarchy since Diana is Harry and Meghan. And they were like, uh, oh, we can't deal with this. Once Harry got married, a mixed racial woman who, I mean, at this point, she doesn't even look like to me what I would consider to be mixed race. She just looks like a dark skinned woman, but obviously she's biracial. But I mean, to think that that would even cause such a stir in this day and age is kind of strange on some level. But we're seeing just how embedded this, um, uh, yeah, Prince Andrew. Thanks. Thanks, Melanie. I forget their names. They're, all the names, they all sound the same. They're all white men names. I forget them. You know, Andrew, William, Harry, Charles. Who can remember unless you're paying attention? I don't remember their names. Andrew, that's his name. Andrew to me is always is always Hurricane Andrew. I think of Andrew, I think of the hurricane and a good buddy I have named Andrew. I can't anyway, so um, I remember the stories. I don't remember the names. And by the way, that's a failing in life as well. I forget people's names all the time, but I'll never forget their charts if I've looked at it. So anyway, I don't want to ramble here too much. But so I think that um, that what we're seeing right now is a sad family dispute playing out in public, I think there's going to be some healing, particularly, and, and it's a sign of our times, you know, we're like, Harry and Meghan are like the rest of us, you know, they're been through COVID, they're like restless, they're like, you know, let me do something, <laughs> I kind of think that's part of it as well, we're all ready to, ready to bust out, and um, I think there's going to be more healing once Jupiter once these planets get out of get out of uh, this get out of this transit here again, this is where, well. I move this forward, but if we go back, uh, let me do that. If we go back, you know, we're here. We're about here right now. These planets are going to start moving. We're going to have an exalted Venus again. Even if we look in a month, you know, if we look this time next month, April sixth, Jupiter is now moved into. Aquarius, Venus, and Venus is in Pisces. The sun is there. I don't think we're going to have this blood feud. I think these brothers really love each other. And I think William is going to show. Oh, and there was also the thing with Kate Middleton as well. There was this thing about making each other cry and stuff. Again, these could be some things. But I, I, I think for the good of all, the monarchy is going to have to raise their game. They're going to come through. I think there's going to be... Maybe at some point we're going to see an interview with the brothers, maybe all four of them at some point, and there's going to be a moving moving culture forward. Again, my feeling is that it was up to William to actually do that and put his arm around Harry and Meghan when they had when when there was that chance, but maybe just the pressure of the family and some again misunderstandings and some maybe cattiness and embedded. Um, white privilege. I'm not going to say racism. I'm going to say white privilege because I don't think that I don't think there's I think there's a difference and not realizing the difference white people have had for so long. And I know a lot of people hate that term white privilege because it's also not really explained very well. But I think for non people of color, they don't understand how much they skate by and how much even a simple thing like questioning a dark-skinned person about something like, oh, how dark do you think your child might be? It's just to a white person, it might be an innocent inquiry or, or this cloud of what might be innocent and extremely innocent, like not racist, like you want to hold the person down, but not seeing the perspective of people of color. This is something that all white people, frankly, non-people of color, are coming to terms with in this Age, including myself, where I, I also understand that and um, 
again, it's not racist because I've never wanted, you know, I've never thought that because of someone's race, I don't want to be around them or this or that, but definitely not understanding just the embedded privilege, not just of being white, but also of being male, what that has. And it's a great opportunity to um, uh, dignify the conversation instead of having it be a sort of, um, you know, cluster F. It's about the only word that came into my mind. This, But this this sort of um, something that there's a lot of contentiousness around. And um, so anyway, I think that uh, that um, this is where we're, this is where we're at. And um, again, I, I, uh, it's sad to watch, particularly with the brothers and with the real pain that's here, you know, this is genuine. I don't think anybody wanted to do this. Megan and Harry, I, I think it's sincere that they didn't want to do that. They wanted to be in the family. They wanted to be accepted, but they felt like they weren't accepted by the British press, by, or at least that there was constant, you know, Harry's watching his wife beat up by, I mean, who, he watched his mother do that. How in the world could that not be just obvious? What would he possibly have to gain? Plus he didn't make it up. We saw it, the racism. And then not have the throne like really defend her and say, look, this is my wife. This is going to be part of our family for the rest of my life, mother of my kids. And to not feel 100% support from his father and his brother, that's all it would have taken. You mean you're not 100% in my camp? Okay, 75% ain't enough. You say you love me and all, but I don't I don't want to hear any questions about it. what color might the baby be? At that In that environment, that kind of question is just not acceptable. And it's like, okay, I'm going to leave. And so I can see why that would just be in an environment like that, where there's not a hundred percent support and a defense of you. It's not enough to say, Oh yeah, the press is bad, but let's not say anything publicly. No, you want a full throated defense. You want a full throated defense of your family. And they did. That's not what happened in that environment where there's not a full throated defense, then everything that is, even looks a little cooperative is going to be seen as an offense, I think. So hopefully this is a, um, you know, leads to a catalyst here. So I, it looks like people are, so this is, um, I'm looking at the, at the, at the comments here. This is um, you know, kind of whatever. I It's too much. It's people just arguing the merits, not what I'm saying about the astrology. So I did want to show it as an astrology case study as well. And I hope it was interesting to see, um, especially looking at the charts of these brothers and seeing their connection. You really can see this is two brothers who really love each other. Again, there's a Jupiter Saturn through synastry here. There's also, again, they both have Jupiter, both, both both Jupiterian, they're both fired up by what they believe and and their purpose and their mission. Um, again, William is definitely more conservative, you would say, in this sense at least, with with this Mars, Saturn, and Virgo and Mercury, Venus here in the sixth. You know, um, and he's you know William is also getting that nodal transit over his Venus Mercury, but I think they're going to um, I think they're going to hopefully. Uh, you know, take this to something uh, more, um, you know, enlightened. So anyway, folks, um, I did just want to, again, put in, if you're interested, um, you know, I do, I am offering these, uh, these readings, and a lot of people have gotten them. Let me bring this up here. These um, assessments where you can know your, how 2021 is going to work out for you based on these, based on, you know, based on the transits now and the different, uh, you know, shifts, especially based on your dashas and your, um, you know, on your astrology. So you could go ahead and do that if that's, if you think that'll help you and you take care.